What is up everyone, Movie Wayne back again with another video and today is going to be 10 movies from my collection that I need to rewatch. Now this is a video inspired from my good friend Sam over at the channel Sammy G's World of Cinema. I'll leave the link to his video down below. I've asked him if he's happy for me to do this and he, he is, he, he's looking forward to seeing it. So I'm not stealing his idea or anything. I just thought this would be a fun video to do because there are many movies that I probably should give a second view to. They can change your mind. It's happened to me so many times in the past. So I've just plucked out 10 from the collection there. Now these are probably the most popular ones that I need to rewatch or there's a general consensus that these are some of the greatest movies ever made. Um, people have them very high on their list and I'm just not really vibing with them, but I have only seen them one time. Now I'm going to be doing a companion video to this as well over on my horror channel, 10 horror movies that I need to rewatch. So just bear in mind that there aren't going to be any horror movies in here. But if the video goes up before this video, I'll leave it in the link down below. Otherwise, I'll just leave a link to my horror channel down below and it'll be coming to the channel shortly on there. So let's just get into it now with number 10. Not really in any particular order, but I've tried to go from as much as least rewatchability to high rewatchability as much as I can there. So here's the first film. So the first film is 1917. Now this is one of the very first movies I ever reviewed on this channel when I was all excited about starting movie where when I wanted to review everything out there. <laughs> Times have changed of course but um, this is one of the, I think this might have been the second or third movie I ever reviewed on this channel and I was really looking forward to it and I got a bit of terrible feedback from someone I know and it just really put me on a down of going to see this film. Now, I have become very, very thick-skinned over the years. If someone leaves a negative comment on my channel, which is hardly ever, to be fair, I don't really care. I mean, I just see words on the screen, and I don't let it bother me. So, some people are not the same, and I kind of was like that when I first started. But to do YouTube, I suppose you've got to try to be a bit thick-skinned, as horrible as them people are. It happens. and. When I went to see this movie, I was kind of like oh, on a bit of a downer because I was so excited about starting my new channel. And I couldn't really get in the mood to watch this movie. Now, World War one or two movies, war movies in general, it's not really my bag. I, I don't really go to them very often. It's very rare that I'll pluck a war movie off my shelf behind me. And I haven't seen many of them. I've seen the most famous ones like Saving Private Ryan and stuff. But this one was getting so much praise uh, when I went to see it. People were giving it 10 out of 10 and everything. And I just thought this was fine. I, I thought it was a good 7 out of 10 movie. But I, I just didn't see the whole story side of things. I thought this was more of a gimmick. And a very well done gimmick at that. The movie is mostly one shot. I know there's edits in here, there, here and there. But I think I would like to give this another go in a much brighter mood. Not that it's a movie that gets you in high spirit or anything like that. But I just wasn't in the right mindset watching this movie. And I may feel the same. You never know. But it may go up. Now, I do own this on 4K. With the, I bought this with the intention of giving it another watch because of me not being in the best mood in the cinema. But with my OLED TV now and stuff, this could look amazing. I don't know what the transfer is like, but I'm, I'm willing to bet it looks fantastic. So, in number 10. It's 1917. Number nine is going to be The Hateful Eight. Now, Quentin Tarantino is my number one director of all time. But there are two movies of his that I've only watched once. And even though I really enjoyed them, I just feel like I need to go back. And Jackie Brown was one of them, but I really enjoyed that movie anyway. But this one is on the lower end. In fact, it's last on my Tarantino ranking even though I still enjoyed it. I just didn't enjoy it as much as all his other movies. And I think I was expecting like a Django type film here. I was on such a high after watching that movie. And it's not quite that. This is more of a, a stage play type movie where it all takes place in the one location mostly. Um, and I had a good time with the characters and stuff, but I felt like I was always waiting around for something to happen. But when you think of it, Tantino does this a lot. It's very dialogue heavy as films. And this is a little bit of a long one. So when it wasn't really working for me, it did feel like a little bit of a slog to get through, even though I was entertained at times through it. But I would like to give this one another watch because 
I've heard so many people say they didn't like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood the first time they watched it, and then they loved it. So maybe this is the case for me, even though I didn't, I didn't hate the movie or anything. I just don't think it's just up to scratch with a lot of his other movies. But a lot of people have this very high on their Tarantino ranking, so maybe I'm miss missing something a little bit there. Definitely going to want to give this another go at some point. So that is The Hateful Eight. Number eight is going to be Unforgiven. Now, like war movies, Western isn't really my go-to genre. I do have the Fistful of Dollars theme tune as my ringtone, <laughs> weirdly enough. But it's just not really a, a genre I go to all that much. Now, I watched this when I was about 15 years old, 16 years old. And when you're in your teenage years, you can just watch a movie and go, yeah, that was fine. But through much more adult eyes, I think you can really see it in a new light. And I do feel like Unforgiven may be one of them films. Again, like The Hateful Eight, I did enjoy this movie. I didn't dislike her on anything, but I just can't really remember too much about it. But people say this is possibly the best Western ever or one of the best westerns ever made after the spaghetti western trilogy so i do like clint eastwood as a director i'm pretty sure he directed this yes he did and there's got some great stars in there so yeah i, I think i owe this movie another go so so many people love it after i have to give it a rewatch because my memory is a little bit hazy on it so that is unforgiven next up we have Oppenheimer, which is the latest movie out of all these movies to release, a 2023 film. And I just remember being in the cinema, watching this, so tired. I did enjoy what I seen, but there were moments where I dropped off for a couple of minutes. My friend Jamie, who came with me, said, yeah, you dropped off for a couple of minutes there. And I kind of got a little bit lost in like the third act a little bit. I've heard so much praise for this film, the amount of people who love this movie and say it's one of the greatest films ever made, possibly even Christopher Nolan's best and stuff. I owe it to this film to ha give it another go. So, yeah, I mean, I, I bought that with the intentions of giving it another go, um, but I just haven't got around to it yet. I bought this way back in December. It's October now, so had this in the collection for a while. Do not get into some of the bad habits I get into with collecting. I've got a whole new video planned for that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I really should have watched this by now. And uh, But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You know, This looks fantastic on 4K as well. So that is Oppenheimer. Next up, we have V for Vendetta. Now, this is a film, again, like Unforgiven. I watched in my teenage years. And it's one of the very few movies in my life that I've turned off. I usually always get to the end of the film and you know feel like i owe it to the movie to make it to the end and it's not that i didn't like it there was some really cool stuff in here i just couldn't really grasp what the movie was going for it felt like a little bit weird like a futuristic guy Fawkes movie and stuff and i think it's all based on a comic book and stuff but i watched watchmen earlier this year and i think up to now that's the best movie i've watched this year and I put a question on Twitter saying, look, is there any movies, kind of like Watchmen, that you can recommend? Because my wife is saying, any movies like that? And someone just said V for Vendetta. Now, I don't know if that is the same type of movie or anything, but they, I think, it, you know, with them both being based on the comic book, um, my wife really wants to give this one a go after hearing someone say that on Twitter to me. Paul, if you're watching, it was you. So, yeah, I know that a lot of people like if you see top 100 movies ever made list this usually makes it on there but uh matthew portman in there who i love so yeah definitely need to give this one another go i feel that is v for vendetta next up we do have apocalypse now again didn't watch this movie until i was about 15 16 years old and i watched it and went yeah that was a fine war movie didn't see all the fuss but the amount of people who go on about this film saying it's one of the greatest films of all time and everything. And when the 4K came out, I seen a lot of people in the YouTube community watching it for the first time saying, wow, this movie's amazing. Um, again, need to give it another go. It's another war movie, not one that I quite gravitate towards. But uh, yeah, how can so many people be wrong? Francis Ford Coppola, obviously, who brought us The Godfather 1 and 2, which... Funny enough, I didn't really love The Godfather the first time I watched it, but upon rewatches that and The Godfather 2, 
are the two of the greatest films I've ever seen. So it just shows what rewatches can actually do now, doesn't it? Remember a lot of the great scenes in this movie, like the helicopters and stuff. Uh, love the smell of napalm in the morning. <laughs> but I just feel like through more adult eyes, I will appreciate the cinematography and stuff a lot more here. I did watch the Redux version, which some people say you don't really need to. Oh, man. when there's director's cuts coming out that are longer i usually always go to that but yeah probably need to give this one another go as well so that is apocalypse now next up we have another christopher nolan movie interstellar now i'm not gonna lie i just was so confused with this film when i watched it i went with my friend jamie and my brother-in-law carl man that was so long ago 2012 was this film i mean what can oh, that is absolutely flown by Anyway, <laughs> yeah, us three went to watch it, and we all walked out the movie and went, what the hell was that all about? Don't think any of us really liked it, but since that's been released, Jamie, my friend who has went to watch it with me, has since came up to me and I watched that Interstellar again, you know, and it was really good. I really got into it the second time, and then my brother-in-law, Carl, a few months later said, oh, I rewatched Interstellar, by the way, and I really enjoyed it a second time. And I just couldn't bring myself to watch it again. I was like so confused with the movie and stuff. But for them two to both say that they enjoyed it a hell of a lot more on rewatch, but we all had the same feelings coming out of it, maybe I will feel the same. Bought this on 4K with the intention of doing exactly just that. I just haven't got back around to it yet. I have popped this disc in though, just to see if it was how it looked in the 4K play, and it looked absolutely amazing. That scene where they go to that planet and they're walking on the water is jaw dropping so yeah need to give this one another go i just really remembered this like in the ending where he's talking to his daughter through the wall and stuff i couldn't vibe with that at all but yeah i will give in to stella another go at some point next up we have the big lebowski now this is probably the most famous movie for being better on rewatch the amount of people who say that i mean if you type in on google movies that are better on rewatch i'm willing to bet that the big lebowski comes up on a hell of a lot of those people's lists or in the comment sections on reddit this was fine i like the coen brothers a lot fargo is one of my favorite films of all time some really cool mo uh, funny moments in this involving steve buscemi and um, john goodman of course at the banter they have back and forth I just couldn't really vibe with Jeff Bridges in this film, the dude. Hated the way he was always in his um, in his robe. You know, he just reminded me of a really scruffy guy who just didn't care. And that is his character, of course. And I just couldn't really get into it all that much. I didn't really get where the comedy was going for at times, even though I did like the Buscemi Goodman banter back and forth. And this whole bowling thing going on in this film, like, yeah. Need to give it another go, don't I, guys? So, yeah, as a fan of the Coen brothers, this one just doesn't really hit the heights for me. So, yeah, I'll give it another go at some point. It's probably the most famous one that is better on rewatch, according to a lot of people there. That is The Big Lebowski. Next up, we do have John Carpenter's Big Trouble in Little China. Now, I've got a bit of a confession to me here, guys. I don't think John Carpenter is all that amazing. Now, a lot of people might turn the video off here. I absolutely love Halloween. I love Christine. But I don't know. I just think most of his movies are good, and that's about it. Nothing too spectacular. The Fog, They Live, The Thing even. Like, I like The Thing, but I don't class it as one of the greatest horror movies ever made or anything like that. So... I have similar feelings with this film, but this was one that I kind of didn't like. But there may be a reason for that. Now, I've told this story on the channel before, but me and my wife were, she was staying over at my house when we were first dating. I only had a single bed at the time, and it was the hottest day of the year. It was a Sunday night. I had work the next day, and it was just so hot. Like, I remember sweating i couldn't sleep and me and her said it was like 12 o'clock at night 11 o'clock at night both couldn't sleep and i said should we just put a movie on and try and fall asleep or you know maybe it'll just get us through the next couple of hours while we're not you can't you know rest and i threw this one on big trouble in little china because i said to it look this is really meant to be a really great film my uncle levi said this is one of the very few 10 out of 10 movies he's ever seen and everything like that 
and I put it on, and it was just so fucking weird. Like, <laughs> all this kung fu stuff going on in the middle of the streets. I... Uh, it was just so weird, all this magical, mystical stuff. I just didn't expect that whatsoever. <laughs> I didn't. This was a long time ago. Like when I was first dating my wife, it was like ten years ago, and I just didn't quite get what it was going for. And with this, there was this dog barking outside as well, which made it even worse. It was constantly barking throughout the movie. It was so hot. I couldn't rest watching the film. So maybe I need to give this another go. So many people love this movie and say maybe John Carpenter's best, or many people say it's his best after the thing and Halloween. I didn't quite see that. There's many more John Carpenter films I prefer over this one. So, yeah, maybe I need to give this one another go as well, guys. That is Big Trouble in Little China. And last up, we do have what many people consider to be one of the greatest movies of all time. And I thought this was dull and boring as anything. And that is 2001 A Space Odyssey from Stanley Kubrick, a, direct, a director I really do admire. Absolutely love Clockwork Orange. Full Metal Jacket's great. He's made so many great movies. The Shining, of course. But this one, I was just bored out of my brains watching this movie now the one thing i can give it is the visuals absolutely stunning that moment where we're just going through all these kind of lights and stuff absolutely unbelievable to look at i cannot knock it for that visually impressive but everything else i was like what's going on here i, I just didn't really get the whole film it's kind of like in four different parts where we start from the beginning of mankind to this guy fucking talking to a computer in a space in a spaceship i mean I, I, I look i watched this a very long time ago it was one of the very first blu-rays i ever bought way back in like 2008 so maybe upon rewatch i will see what this movie can do for me like it does for so many other people I have people telling me all the time that this is one of the greatest films ever made. I just don't see it, but I have only watched it once. So that is number one, 2001, A Space Odyssey. Okay, guys, hope you all enjoyed this video. What do you think of my rewatches? Which ones do you consider that I should rewatch the most? What movies do you feel like you need to rewatch that didn't really hit it for you the first time? Please do leave your comments down below and I get back to you all, I promise. Please give this video a like and subscribe if this is your sort of thing. Thanks so much, guys. You take care and I'll see you all in the next video.